Thank you so much to all our supporters who make all these shows possible and for us to go where we go and talk to who we talk to. Today, I'm very proud to have John Proudstar, a friend of mine, on the show and uh, worked together before, but he's got lots of really cool stuff coming up, so stay tuned because it's going to be a great show. Hey, John. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> all right, so we met a long time ago. You're going to age me. <laughs> a long time ago, uh, worked on a film together and um, have had some other interconnections. But uh, today we're here to talk about a few different things that you've got going. First one is, is Tribal Force, which is a comic book based all with Native characters. Yes. Yeah, it is literally the first all-Native superhero comic book in the history of the United States. It was inducted into the Smithsonian Institute for being the first all-Native superhero book to ever be done, which was kind of a shock when I was told, because uh, I didn't realize. I thought somewhere, somehow, somebody sh could have done it or should have done it. Um, How did you find out? Who, who I got a call from the uh, university in Boston, and they said they wanted it in one of their universities. And they said, you know you're the first one, right? And I was like, I, I, I go, no, I, I didn't realize it was first he goes yeah you're the first because we did the research and then shortly after we got contacted by the smithsonian institute they were doing a special natives in pop culture exhibit and some of the artists that were bringing their art um had tribal force imagery and they were like what's this so these artists were told, oh yeah it's this comic book that came out in the 90s and you know only one issue came out <laughs> And then they contacted us and they're like, we want you to be in this exhibit because you're the first ever and you influenced all these up and coming native art, young native pop artists, you know. So that, that just, it was like, you never think you're going to be the first guy, you know, <laughs> and that's not why we did it. You know, we just wanted to put this book out, uh, but it did give us this instant air of credibility. And now, years later, after all that, like when I go to conventions or, you know, native spawn conventions, they're like, oh, you're the godfather of Indian comics. <laughs> oh my God. I think you feel ancient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And guys, you know, that look like you will go to me. Yeah, my dad bought this for me when I was a kid. And I'm like, when you were a kid? <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That, that must have been something to have have that that call come to you and to have so many people be able to to relate to it and so then what what then what was the impetus behind the creation of it what what made you say this needs to be something to be done because uh, I had always wanted to do it you know I grew up on comic books and the only heroes I could kind of relate to were you know Conan because he looked native you know he had dark skin and long hair and then there was Lone Ranger and Tonto, and then, you know, Tonto, of course, and then Thunderbird from the X-Men had the most profound effect on me as a kid. And then they killed him after three issues, and I was mad. I was pissed, dude. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm going to buy Marvel and bring it back. And, you know, so for years I waited for Marvel or DC to come up with Native Heroes, and every now and then they would, but they were very stereotypical. They didn't feel real to me. War Warpath was different. Than Thunderbird. Yeah, right? that was Thunderbird's little Mark. brother, James, James Proudstar. Um, but still, even there, you know, they're supposed to be Apache and they, they were nothing like the like actual Apache people. Right. Um, right. You know, so I just started fantasizing and daydreaming, like, oh, what if Spider Man were, you know, native or Latino or just different ethnicities? How would it have played differently? And then it just started to create these heroes and, like, I would always think, well, if I were in charge, what would I do? And then little by little, the confidence, as you get older, you start figuring out how comic books are made. It was still a super expensive process back, you know, 1989, 1990, when I started making this stuff up. So I thought, worst case scenario, I can always just like photocopy, like photocopy, you know, draw and make photocopies. Probably can't have color, but black and white, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, so I started creating the heroes, and from the heroes, I'm like, okay, I need a story, and I have to learn how to write. Um, you know, and it slowly came together. You know, this that it was going to have to be a group because I was very much in love with the X Men, and I love that bringing of strangers together, and then what happens when you know, you know different personalities get mixed in. Sure. <laughs> some like each other, some hate each other. There's attraction. There's detraction. Uh, there's the rule breakers and the rule followers. And, you know, it's like high school, you know, you get put together in a play. Uh, so I love that formula. Um, and then during all that time, I've been working with survivors of child molestation and violent youth offenders. And I saw that there was this massive gap of knowledge within our youth about our culture. Uh, and it was the same way, whatever native community I went, the youth didn't quite understand their own culture because it was very intimidating to go to an elder and try and learn from them because the elders not didn't like anything new, anything foreign, anything too American. Maybe you came in a rock and roll shirt, an ACDC shirt or something, they would be real, you know, that was disrespectful. So you're always walking around eight shells around the elders. And then if you try to pick up a book and read about your own tribe, it was very, just too academic, you know? not enough pictures, <laughs> you know, it's just all words and, you know, uh, so I thought, well, if we could do a comic book and slowly teach kids, slowly inject knowledge every issue, it didn't have to be too crazy, but that's how I learned, you know, a lot of the knowledge I had was reading comic books. And I would, you know, like when I found out Wolverine was from Canada, I didn't even know that there were cities in Canada. <laughs> I thought it was just a vast <laughs> it's wilderness. It's as far as Jack. Yeah. It's totally how I thought it was when I was a kid. Yeah. Too. And I'm like, wait, they're drawing cities. So I would, you know, I went and looked it up at the library and I'm like, there's a city. Yeah. You know, like, I had to say that. I looked up and I saw pictures of Toronto and I'm like, that's a huge city. Yeah. It's like they have buildings I was in the highway. Town. Yeah. <laughs> like log cabins, right? you know, miners and. Uh, yeah, so that's how I learned. And then, you know, and, and demandium, I researched, was that a real metal? And, you know, it, it, it puts those seeds in kids, those seeds of curiosity where they want to learn what's real and what's not. And I thought, well, why can't we do this? The same thing with Native American history, mm -hmm. just kind of sort of surrounded with a bunch of cool sci-fi stuff. And every issue just put a drop of Native culture in. And whether you're Native American or white or black or Asian, you're going to get that thing and say, I wonder if that's true. And you look it up and you start to learn, literally learn more about the Native American culture, not just the past, but that Native Americans are contemporary, that we're alive and we're here today. And we walk the streets and we have jobs like cashiers and cops and doctors. And, you know, we're part of the fabric of society, which unfortunately entertainment is barely they're barely scratching the surface like if if there's a show with a native in it it's almost like they have to have a, an excuse so the show has to be about a casino or a sacred item that was stolen and there's going to be an evil screen somewhere in there and the rattle of a snake and you know they can't just say oh yeah he's native and that he's the guy who serves coffee <laughs> you know there's got to be some reason he's there there's an excuse for him to be there so it's the subliminal message to natives that, you know, we don't have a place for you in our society, even though we're already here. So that's, that was my goal. That was like the, you know, the inner workings of tribal force, my hopes um, to help that community out, survivors of trauma molestation and violent youth offender that exist on the reservations today, and also to educate our native kids on their own culture and for them to see it as cool. You know, not just that uh, it's still here and it exists, but it's, you know, it's bad. You know, these guys, they have all the imagery on tribal force. It's all from different tribes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Thunder Eagle's symbol is a ghost dance symbol from the ghost dance, mm -hmm. from the Paiute medicine man, Wavoka. Uh, Nita, when she eventually becomes her hero, Earth, uh, she's going to have the Navajo Earth symbol. Uh, the Jaguar Knight, you know, he's actually from 500 years ago, but he's here now. But his costume, I, you know, emulated after the Jaguar Knights, and he only comes out at night, just like the actual Jaguar Knights. They would only do battle at night. So there's these little, you know, things, these fish hooks from the past that 
keep those traditions sacred. And little by little, you're going to get to meet these characters and, and the hows and the whys that they are and the responsibility that comes along with having these superpowers that they get. And you guys have a, a major fundraiser. Right yeah, we got a Kickstarter coming up day after Valentine's Day. Uh, God, this has been years in the making. You know, Gene Jimenez from Machine Comics. I've known him since 1996, 95, actually, when he was one of the guys working on Tribal Force. I think he was part of the original colorist. And over the years, he and I have kept in touch, you know, to say, hey, how are you doing? What you up to? And I think both of us just kind of seeing where we were at to see if there might be a chance of a team up of some kind. But we were never there, you know, uh, Tribal Force was too handicapped at one time, you know, financially. Um, or there wasn't enough done for him to be able to do anything, or he didn't have quite enough resources to do anything for me on his part. So one day, you know, I get that random email from him, we're just chatting, and then he says something, I'm like, oh, really? And I'm like, guess what I'm doing? And then it all starts to align. And then we're like, you know, we get to that point, we're like, Let's let's do this, man. Let's do it. And I was investing in Tribal Force from my paychecks from Reservation Dogs. I finally had enough money to hire an artist and you know pay him his worth and an inker, which was really hard to do because it is the most money I've ever given another human being in my life. So Chris Williams and Jake Eisenberg know that. <laughs> and it was so I was scared because. It was the first time I had made a significant amount of money through movies. And here was my opportunity. What do you do? Do you save it? Do you invest? Do you? And a good friend of mine, Sonny Campbell, she was like, dude, invest in tribal force. You're going to regret it if you don't. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. You're right. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's, it's time to, you know, walk the walk. I talk the talk. Believe you me. So now it's time to do it. And I said, okay, you know, I just ripped that cord. <laughs> and I made the calls. I made the commitment to these guys. Uh, and then the first few pages started coming in. I felt really proud. I was like, oh, here it is. Here it is at last. You know, just the way I wanted it. Uh, and then Gene, uh, he knew I was going to run out of money real soon. So he was like, you know, I, I can maybe write a grant. I've got some money. Uh, you know, so that's when we... You know, I had my uh, my rep contact them. We did a contract. The contracts went really well, real easy, because um, we we had the same goal. And you know, both Gene and I, not that we're not interested in money. Of course, we want to make money, but that's not what drives Gene. That's not what drives me. Um, you know, so it was a, a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. And plus, he had the the past with Tribal Force, so he's been there since the beginning. And, uh, since 96, and my tune has not changed. I'm literally the same guy I was on day one. And, and he knows that. I have not changed. Nothing has changed about my goals with Tribal Force. So he knows I don't care about money. <laughs> he doesn't, right. he yeah. doesn't throw figures at me or anything like that. I'm like, well, cool. If we make money, that'd be awesome. And if not, I'm cool with that too. Just as long as the book gets out there. Uh, so we're going to do this Kickstarter, and I'm really excited. And we've got pretty much everything done. So whatever we're going to offer on Kickstarter it is done. We don't. We're not asking for money to do this. We're asking for money to publish the book, to physically publish the book. Another thing I'm hoping, and I know Tribal Force is done already. We've inspired young Native American creators. You know. Uh, there's Captain Paiute, Shadow Wolf, the Hero Twins, all these guys who are making their own native comic books, and they've come to me and said, hey, you know, uh, you inspired me. And it's amazing to see these amazing guys, and uh, they're amazing books, you know. Uh, so Tribal Force has already done it, but again, I, I hope to continue to do that with Tribal Force. I know there's a whole new... God, it's been since 1996, so there's a whole new audience out there that doesn't know anything about Tribal Force. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we'll inspire kids to do something, to say, if he did it, I can do it, mm -hmm. and, and better. And whether it's comic books or videos or movies or acting or anything like that, that's, I hope I inspire. 
you know, that's my that's my main thing. And my inspiration came from Jay Silverhill's Will Sampson, uh, seeing those first natives on the screen. And then, of course, Peter Sellers. He's not native, but <laughs> he's one of my biggest influences. <laughs> John, thank you very much for being on the show. It was a pleasure talking with you, and and we're looking forward to everything you have coming up. Cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned.